This is a 72-year-old gentleman who presented to his physician with a two-month history of night sweats and weight loss. Uh, he also had increasing fatigue. When he was evaluated, it was noted that he had right supraclavicular lymphadenopathy uh, and his spleen was palpable. Blood work showed a normal white blood cell count but a high LDH. So the patient underwent an excisional biopsy of that right supraclavicular lymph node, which showed a um, definite lymphoma. The cells were CD5 positive, CD20 positive, and CD23 negative. The cells were positive for cyclin D1 by immunohistochemistry, and the cells had an 1114 translocation by FISH. And all of that is consistent with the diagnosis of mantle cell lymphoma. So the patient went on to have a full staging evaluation, and that included PET imaging and a bone marrow evaluation. The PET showed widespread lymphadenopathy in multiple nodal regions, as well as uptake in the spleen and splenic hilum, and the bone marrow was involved. So this patient has uh, symptomatic high tumor burden stage four mantle cell lymphoma. This is a rather typical presentation for mantle cell lymphoma. Uh, it's a disease, it's a disease, sorry. It's a disease that affects older males predominantly. Uh, patients often come in with symptoms, uh, and those symptoms are, can be typical lymphoma symptoms like fevers, night sweats, weight loss. They might have pain from increasing lymphadenopathy. They might have early satiety and weight loss from splenomegaly. Um, it's very typical to have um, advanced stage uh, in mantle cell lymphoma, most people have stage three or four disease. So there's nothing about this case that is particularly unusual in the presentation. Uh, the patient is quite symptomatic and he does have a high LDH. A only a minority of patients have a high LDH with their mantle cell presentation. So that does make me worry that this particular case is a little more aggressive than the average case. Some patients will come in and their disease is just found um, incidentally. They just noted a, a lump, but they feel okay. And you do the whole staging evaluation. And uh, they have a low tumor burden, and they're asymptomatic. Their blood counts are good. So there is a subset of patients with mantle cell lymphoma who can start out on a watch and wait strategy. Maybe 10 or 20% of every newly diagnosed mantle cell patient can start off on that strategy but certainly the majority of patients with newly diagnosed mantle cell do need to start on treatment at the time of diagnosis. And I would say that's true in this case, this patient needs to start on treatment. To make a diagnosis of mantle cell lymphoma, um, the, patient, the patient's biopsy needs to show the right um, histology, the right morphology. The cells need to have a typical appearance for mantle cell lymphoma. It needs to have uh, the typical mantle cell phenotype uh, immunophenotype, I should say, CD5 positive, CD20 positive, CD10 negative, CD23 negative. That's typical for mantle cell. Most importantly, the cells should be cyclin D1 positive on immunohistochemistry. That's a pretty specific test. Um, there are a few other conditions that can have positive cyclin D1 staining, but not many. And it should have an 1114 translocation by FISH testing. So Applying those three strategies, the um, flow cytometry, the immunohistochemistry, and the FISH testing, mantle cell is not a particularly hard or difficult diagnosis nowadays. Mm -hmm.